Hey, welcome back to Meeting of the Minds. I'm Gene Zanetti, your coast to coast mindset coach from Wrestling Mindset. Today we got a great one. We got Coach Kevin Ward from the United States Military Academy. That's right, you heard me right. The Army coach is joining us for this great episode of Meeting of the Minds. We're happy that you joined us today. Got my West Side Barbell shirt on. Again, strongest gym in the world, bar none, power lifters. They have a guy who totaled over 3,100, I believe. All right, Coach, let's bring you on in. There it is, Army. Let's get it going, get it going. Hey, Coach, what's going on? Hey, what's up? How you doing? Man, uh, no complaints. As, as I've said to everyone who's asked me lately, there's no complaints, just quarantine. So we're, uh, we're all That's doing it. the same thing. And yeah, but we're doing pretty well. How how you guys doing? So far, so good. For us, it's, right. you know, it's all pretty much virtual training anyway, so it's pretty much more the same. Yeah, yeah, right on. Well, I'm pumped to be a part of it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So a lot of these meeting of the minds we've been doing, great to touch base with top-tier coaches and wrestlers like yourself. So we're happy to have you. Yeah, hey, we, cool. got a, we got to first pay tribute to um, C.J. Morgan. Um, cool. at Memorial Day yesterday, obviously, is... As nice, as great a kid as you could possibly want to meet on, off the mat, academically, athletically. I mean, I worked personally, actually, with CJ since he was probably a junior in high school throughout um, several years into the, the um, military academy. So, man, God bless him and his family. We pray for him. Our hearts yeah. go out to him. And, and, of course, for all the people um, who've lost their lives in service, Memorial Day. So we got we got to pay tribute to them first right out of the block. Yeah, so. yeah. I appreciate you saying that. And certainly, I mean, I think being at West Point, you know, where I'm at now, it gives a new meaning um, to, uh, well, you know, you have a new respect for, for men and women that wear the uniform, and especially, you know, um, some people pay the ultimate sacrifice. We can never repay. Uh, we can just hope to honor the way they live. So I appreciate you saying that about CJ. It's certainly, um, you know, it's, it's a pretty somber mood um, for us. And, uh, but you know what? He spoke really highly of you guys. Like he used your your information. He used your coaching and your influence often, um, and, uh, and we try to carry on his influence and, and just uh, live life with passion and love, just the way CJ did. Absolutely, we're all better people having known CJ. That's that's for sure. And um, yeah, just great all around. So yeah, we pay tribute to him, and of course all the, all of um all of our soldiers, all the you know. All of the U.S. Armed Services, Army, Navy, Air Force, everyone. I mean, it's all red, white, and blue. We, we love them. We thank them for what they do, they've done. And I always say to people, make sure when you see people in the uniform or they, you find out they've, they've served, you always thank them. Thank you for your service. Like, that's customary. You should do it. So um, that's just an important point to start things off with. But So, Coach, tell us, what are your athletes doing right now to get better, to train, wrestling, uh, mentally, nutrition, anything, strength? What are they doing? Yeah, so uh, and hopefully they're doing all of the above, um, you know, but but they're doing what every other wrestler around the country is doing right now is trying to figure out just how do we optimize our time and how do we get better uh, when we're scattered around the country. Our guys right now are scattered literally uh, from coast to coast and um, and they won't be returning to West Point as a group probably until August when our, our students come back to class. So, um, you know, what they're doing right now is, is we really have to trust and they have to trust themselves that they know how to train and they know how to improve and get better. So we are doing some things as a team. Uh, you know, we meet at least a couple times a week in our small groups with the team to talk about, you know, what what's right in your wheelhouse about how you can train the mind uh, in the off season. It's got to be a year round thing like you're training your body uh, for, for our guys staying in shape physically is pretty easy. Uh, they love to work out. Um, it's a lot easier for them to, to go out and work hard and, and stay in good physical shape. Uh, we don't really worry about that. You know, our concerns are they continuing to, to think the right way or they continuing to train their minds the right way. Because as you know, when it comes down to it in the end, uh, the technique is really important, uh, but your belief in your technique and your belief in yourself is probably the most important thing. So we're staying on top of that training, um, trying to stay on top of the, uh, their mental game and um, leaving it to them to make sure that they're maximizing their time to stay in the best physical shape they can. Absolutely. That's all we can do. Just doing the best we can, staying on top of it. And like you said, just crossing your T's, dotting your I's, making sure that you're doing everything to give yourself the best opportunity for when things do open up. That's right. You know, in the end, nothing's going to be guaranteed anyway. 
So what you're trying to do is give yourself your best chance to look back on your career with no regrets. And uh, a lot of that is completely under your control. Uh, if you want to look back and have no regrets, then you're going to know you gave everything that you had. So um, hopefully they're listening and hope maybe some of them are tuned in right now too. Um, so. and, uh, Show me Lane Peters. Back. You on here, Lane? <laughs> I promise you doing it. If he's not out there, I promise you he's doing it. So um, yeah, but it, it's super important. That's what we're working on. That's uh, great stuff. I think you're getting another one of our guys next year, uh, Richard Trainer. Okay. Um, so with specific recruits, you know, I can't really address. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Especially some that may be, um, you know, what class of 2021. So I uh, got gotcha. you. All right. Just so really we'll, pumped about all the commitment <laughs> that we've got. Really <laughs> All right, so we'll, we'll, sh we'll, shout, we'll shout these people out next year. There he is, LP Peters. There he is. Yes, sir. He's on here. Yes. Good man. Oh, great stuff. I always love to see when the wrestlers tune in. That's great. That's great. So, Coach, tell us some of the philosophies. I know you already kind of hit on some of them, but some team principles, philosophies that you have on a coach, some of the lessons you've learned in your career that you carry on to your athletes. Yeah, great, great questions. I'll, I, I guess I'll start with, um, so with our program, um, I don't really have like a list of core values. Like I used to when I was starting my coaching, um, I needed it. I needed a list of, of core values. That sense, how, how I address it and how I think about it is, has changed um, over the past seven or eight years. So um, now the way I describe it is if anybody spends any amount of time around our team, there's a few things that they should notice right away. Uh, and the number one thing about that is, is, is that we don't complain. And, uh, and, and the reason I talk about that is we don't complain because mentally tough people don't complain about circumstances they can't change. So I use a, a George um, Bernard Shaw quote, you know, the, the, the true joy in life is to be a, a force of fortune, not a selfish, feverish clot of ailments and grievances complaining that the world does not devote itself to making you happy. Uh, so you, we don't complain that the world doesn't devote itself to making us happy. You know, we, we, we do everything we can given the, the circumstances we have. Another one of those four things is that we choose to be positive. Uh, quote I use there to help me remember is a Viktor Frankl quote, uh, who wrote a fantastic book, Man's Search for Meaning. He said, you know, um, anything can be taken from you except the last of human freedoms, and that is the, the, the freedom to choose how you feel in any given set of circumstances. So we don't complain. We choose to be positive um, in everything that we do. Uh, so for me, I mean, I think those are, are really core uh, to the type of program that I want to run. Um, you know, you asked maybe um, some of our, our, our other philosophies. I think when it comes to competition, uh, my job as a coach is to help eliminate any barriers uh, that our guys have mentally as, as possible. Um, it's our job to equip our athletes with the tools they need to be successful. So when we talk about tools in wrestling, what do we mean? You know, we're talking like, you know, the, 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 the technique, the tactics, like knowing how to score, the conditioning, obviously. Those are, you know, the, the tools that you need um, and the mind. Um, but uh, when I'm talking about eliminating any fear, I'm talking about they can go out onto the mat and know that no matter what happens, they're proud of their performance and what they've done. So. Um, as a coach, those are my personal philosophies are, are to make sure they have the tools, equip our guys and do whatever I can to eliminate any fear that they may feel before they step on the mat. Absolutely. And, and you being in a very unique position because you're not only just training them as, as wrestlers, but I mean, this is, these are lessons they're taking to defend our country. I mean, these are the, these are the best of the best. They're defending our country. They're moving into positions of leadership in the army. So this is, it's a very unique position that you're in, not taking anything away from other coaches, of course, but an added thing that, that you have at Army. How do you well, deal with that responsibility, that kind of <laughs> No, I mean, for me, it's, it's um, it, it, yeah, can it be a little bit uh, daunting? Maybe at times, but for me, it, it's pretty comforting, actually, because I know that the way I want to coach and, you know, the core mission of the institution I'm at, you know, we're tightly threaded together. Like, that's the way I want to coach. Um, I wouldn't want to coach any other way. And the great thing about being at West Point is I don't have any pressure to coach the other way. Um, and, and now if you asked our wrestlers, they would really push back on what you just said. Like, no, they, they, I'm, I'm not training them just to go be leaders and soldiers, and warriors who go win battles. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They want to go win wrestling matches. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
is obviously my job is to help equip them for life after wrestling, but they're like, I want to freaking win, you know, like I want to win wrestling matches. I want to win an NCAA title. And, um, you know, but we're fortunate that so much of what goes into that, um, is so much a part of our sport anyway. Carries up. Yeah. Car there's a lot of carry over there. Yeah. Everything is a carryover for sure. Yeah. And I, and I think about that, especially in a place like West Point, we talk a lot about using wrestling as a vehicle to build virtues and think about leadership, virtues that goes into being a leader and being a man, right? Veer, that's man in, in Latin, I believe. So um, it's great. Yeah. Great stuff. So, so what, what else do we have going on? What do you see? Any, any word on, or I don't know, can you give us any word on, on what's going on or when things are going to be moving back? Man, the only thing I can really speak to is what I know is what's going on here at West Point. Uh, you know, our, our seniors are coming back um, starting tomorrow, and, uh, and yeah. they're going to be for a graduation that's happening here. I think President Trump made that pretty clear in a press conference when he said we're going to graduate. He's coming to West Point on June 13th, and they're going to hold graduation. Um, so, nice. yeah, our seniors are going to come back, and they're going to be able to graduate alongside their classmates with the President of the United States there delivering the commencement. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, I know the, the summer training for West Point is kind of still in the works, but our, our, our cadets are going to do it. They're gonna train. And, uh, and that means they're training how to be soldiers and, and they're training how to be leaders in the Army when they graduate. And we're definitely going to have class in the fall. Um, you know, that, that's what I know for sure is going to happen here. If we're talking larger scale, you know, like what's going to happen in, in high school wrestling and what's going to happen with the collegiate wrestling season, I'm probably not privy to any more information. See, yeah. <laughs> Anyone else who actively reads the news on that every single day. I mean, the first thing I do every morning, not the first thing, but you know, when I start looking through the news is uh, I look at I, I search like NCAA football news right away, because that's, that's what I want to do. What's going to happen. Cause that's really going to dictate what's going to happen with our season. But I, I mean, right now, you know, to the point, something you talk about all the time is we're controlling what we can, you know, and I, I can't control any other season. I can't control what, decision anybody else is going to make i can control the influence that we try to have on our team and make the most of the situation that we have that's all we could do that's all we could do so now when you when you look outside of your office do you see the hudson river so uh that... can you see me you got me no windows right there in the office so when i was uh, i walked right out of the building but... yeah i got you did i lose you there I, uh, for a second, let me see. I have two bar. I have two bars of trivia. How about now? Are we okay? All right. No, the reason. The reason why I ask. Yeah, you're good. Yeah. The reason why I ask is because I'm right on the Hudson. I'm in New York City, right above the George Washington Bridge on the New York side. So right up the river from you. Right down the river. Yeah, we're like, yeah, we're like forty miles away. So um, <laughs> maybe if I if I hop on one of those cruises, I'm in, and I head down to the city, maybe I'll, I'll stop there and and we'll get together. I didn't know we were so close. Real close. In fact, my 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 wife's family has a house in in Woodlock, Pennsylvania, and um, you know, a little bit north of the Poconos. But we pass by West Point. That's that's where we start. We start veering to the left and go towards Pennsylvania. But that's where we make the basically the turn. Yeah. Well, next time you make next time you're you're venturing up, instead of making that left, just pump the brakes a little bit. Make a right. And yeah, make a right. <laughs> Come on in for a little bit. Yeah. No. Abs absolutely. Absolutely. So, what are the other? I guess I think a lot about mindset. Of course. What are some of the big mental mistakes you see the athletes make or? Any mental struggles that you see on like a regular basis, whether it be just making the adjustment from high school to college or putting too much pressure on themselves, anything like that? Yeah, I mean, I think probably the, the biggest mistake that I see, um, with, especially as guys, you know, maybe they're coming in as freshers, the biggest mental mistake I think that, that I notice is maybe just not enough devotion into that aspect of your training. And we work closely with the sports psychologist that's here on campus and, and um, he works closely with with several different teams but he's you know his, his job is right here at West Point so we can just walk you know to and our guys visit with him at the open invite I think what a lot of our guys expect is let's go see a sports psychologist one 
time and I'm a, I'm a lot better, you know? Yeah. And, and you, this is a process, right? I mean, you've been going to the wrestling room every day for 10 years um, just to get a little bit better every day. Right. You know, just the same thing with training your mind. A little bit every day. It takes consistency. So that may be one of the biggest things I notice is just not uh, enough understanding. you got to work on this every day. And it may be 10 minutes a day, but you need to do it. Right? Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, other areas, what I see maybe struggling with, um, like I said, I look at that as my job as the coach. So, um, so. On those things. So it's not the shortcomings that our guys have when it comes to their mindset and competition. It's probably just me recognizing enough, enough um, the state of mind that they need to be in. Yeah. Because each wrestler is a little bit different, so this wrestler might need to be a little bit more loose. This at this athlete a little bit more pumped up. Um, the other person somewhere in between. So, is it more of a, a meeting that you have with them to figure that out? Do you ask them to communicate that to you? How does how does that work? How do you get that information? Yeah, so it's a combination of everything. So, um, yeah, you you we as coaches want to be great in the wrestling room. We want to be great in the office too. You know, like in in meetings with guys, but. So it's conversations one on one, and some of it is formal, like, "Hey, answer these questions in this packet, and please submit this back to us so we can get to know you better." Uh, but you know what we don't know is we're not really doing that just so we have the information. Given on those questions, so they they have to think about it. So when I say, right. you know, on a scale from one to ten, how pumped up do you need to be? Like one, I gotta slap you to wake you up, and a ten is I'm grabbing a collar saying, "Calm down, you know, you gotta." You got to chill out. Um, now they got to think to themselves, okay, where do I like to be? You know, do I want to be like a six or a seven or I want to be halfway asleep, you know, like a three or four. Um, so it's that. It's trying to get our athletes to evaluate themselves and, and learn themselves a little bit better. Um, because ultimately, they're going to have to know themselves if they're going to make the change. You know, it's right. like I, you can lead a right? Um, but we have to help them learn themselves so that um, you know they can start making those corrections on their own. That's right. Yeah, that's the first. Um, the ancient Greeks always said that: know thyself. Right. The first, the, the first form of it, the first um, topic we cover is self knowledge. You have to know yourself. And I also like how you said, Coach, about making them put a number to it, because that when they put a number to it, it locks them in as an answer. Not to, not so much as gospel but more as like a guideline okay here's the number so now how do we move you up the scale or down the scale so i i, I like that i think that's important a lot of, and a lot of times you don't see coaches use that approach well I mean, and that's the spot right so let's say you know i'm kevin ward i want to be like a seven out of ten and now uh, my coaches or whoever else is around, they got to know how to get me from a five to a seven or from a ten back down to a seven Right. So, but that's not something that's set in stone. It's not gospel, as you said. It's something that you have to actually evaluate. Right. Approach them mentally. Yeah, absolutely. You know, an interesting thing. Do you see me? Can you see me here? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, interesting thing when I think about the numbers, that the whole number scale, especially on one to 10, I forget where I heard this. This might've been a business book. They recommend throwing out the number seven because a lot of people will pick seven, right? So you say, so, so now if you have to pick a six or an eight, it forces you to really think it's like, do I need it more? Or do I need it less? You know, <laughs> I forget where I learned that from. Our, our, our mental evaluation I might use that or just go up to six I may just stop at six so you never know but you see me I don't know what happened there I missed that last part how about now I don't know what's going on we're right on the same river This should be this should be easy. I got you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. No, you're good. 
Some that was so, mountains. Oh, what was that last? Yeah, the mountains. Yeah. <laughs> Good. What was that last thing that you said? Yeah, so we're, we're on the same river. It's probably something to do with the mountains in the way, yeah. you know. I'm, <laughs> yeah. Nah, it's good. Good stuff. Uh, a lot of a lot of great information, Coach. I appreciate. It. So, what else? What do we recommend? What do you recommend wrestlers to do at this time? If you were if you were telling a kid who's in high school, they want to get prepared. Maybe they maybe they're interested in army. Who isn't? Uh, what what do they do? What should what should they be doing to improve themselves and to get themselves army ready? Yeah. So um, if someone if they're interested, they have to let us know. Like we we can't notice everybody in the country. That's the bottom line. So we always encourage people to reach out to us and let us know if they're interested. Um, you know what I would say to anybody that's trying to improve right now. Um, I mean, if you want to get better. You can get better. You know, wake up tomorrow morning and do do 300 burpees. You know, so you don't need a gym. You don't need shiny equipment uh, and, and improve. But I would say now, you know, if, if this has brought anything to light, it's the need to over-communicate, right? Working with teams that are scattered. Same thing with wrestlers and the coaches and recruits. If, if, you're, if you feel a certain way, you got to communicate it. Let people know. Um, so um, you asked the question if somebody's interested um, in our – program uh, over communicate it let us know for sure yeah uh, unfortunately a lot of we've seen a lot of athletes they take the approach oh we're gonna wait till the coach talks to me and we always say no no you're aggressive on the mat you got to be aggressive in life also and i don't mean like anything overboard or like overstepping respect or anything like that but you have to be aggressive let the coach know if you're trying to get into a certain program reach out to the director of that program so your name doesn't go in with the thousands of names. Why are they going to choose you? That goes for getting a job in the future, sitting in the front row of your classes, asking questions, um, asking the pretty girl in your class out on a date, whatever it is. Like you're you're you're, pl you're playing to win, along you know along with the rules and everything. But you're you're going for it. You're being aggressive in a positive way. Yeah, you got to swing your swing, right? That's it. That's it. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, great stuff. Yeah, so it's it's great that I know that we know we're so close now that we're practically neighbors, forty miles away. So we'll have to get together sometime soon, Coach. I appreciate it. I appreciate yeah, right. you jumping on. Tell um tell everyone where people can go to find more information about Army Wrestling website, any social media pages, Twitter, whatever. Right here on Instagram, uh, if you search for Army West Point Wrestling, you're going to find us. We're pretty active and and we stay involved. Accounts, my personal Twitters. At Coach K Ward, um, hit me up, and uh, if I'm allowed to reply, I will. Um, but I always enjoy interacting with our, our fans and, and anyone that the rules will uh, will allow. So check us out if you Army West Point Wrestling. You'll find all our social media. Apps. We're probably most active on Instagram. So hit us up, and, uh, like a couple of the videos. We'll reply to messages when we can. But uh, appreciate everyone's support. Hope everyone stays safe out there. Thanks a lot, Kevin. We really appreciate it. We appreciate all you do and, and training America's best. So thank you. Yeah, all right. man. It's great to be with you. All right. We'll talk again soon. Take care. Just a tremendous conversation. Awesome guy, Kevin Ward. Uh, Army wrestling. Man, what, what could you say about it? Army wrestling. There it is, right? So make sure you check out. Make sure you're finding his, you know, finding this page. Uh, follow Army Wrestling. Make sure every day you're texting our, or you get you get our daily text message. Text mindset one to eight four five seven six. Get our daily message. But again, so much great stuff, Coach, just shared with us. Again, making sure that like evaluate this time that's gone by. That was a really really good point. I know we were a little bit choppy there, but I really like this point about evaluate what you've done during this quarantine. If you, if you said that you're, if maybe an excuse that you had, and we all do this from time to time, so just be honest with yourself, right? No, no one else is going to know. Only you know. Be honest with yourself. 
did I do the things that I, that I needed to do or things that I wanted to do to get better? And did I, did I say that I didn't have the time to do it? Okay, now enough time has gone by in the quarantine where you could evaluate, like Coach said. And if you still haven't done it, and we know you've had time, that means time wasn't the real issue. Now, that's not to make you feel bad. Again, none of us are perfect here. But now you know, maybe it's something other than not having enough time. Maybe it was a motivation issue. Maybe the goals weren't firm enough. Maybe mentally, we didn't, ha we didn't have ourselves in the right mindset. Again, we all struggle with this kind of stuff from time to time. The best athletes in the world have this, the best ones. Okay, we've seen this when we worked with the Olympic teams. They've had, they've had difficulty with goal setting, with motivation. Some UFC fighters that we work with. So guess what? If it's the very best people in the world, you might have that too. We all have it from time to time. So the idea is this. Take the bull by the horns. Make sure you're working on your mindset. And everything Coach Ward said there, I mean, you really want to have a notebook and a pen for these meeting of the minds because he gave some really good information. And we've been having coaches that have some really good information. So it's very important to take what people give you. And the great thing about ideas is if, if you have an idea and I have an idea and we switch ideas, now we each have two ideas. That's a good thing. Right. If I have a dollar and you have a dollar and we switch dollars, we still only have one dollar. But with ideas, we got two now. So, like I said, Coach Kevin Ward, great man. We thank him for, for all that he, that he does for Army wrestling and for and for our country, getting our getting these guys ready um, for the U.S. military, which is tremendous. We thank you all for jumping on the call with us. Make sure you're with us again tomorrow night, uh, 730 p.m. Meeting of the Minds. We'd love to have you again. Take care.